Radiant team back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the CSL 2017 to 2018 season. We are watching Georgia Tech versus University of Georgia. It is currently tied up a 1-1 series. This is going to be brought to you by Wivrex and Golgi Apparatus. Yeah, hello. Hello, hello. And here we are straight into the bands, and it is almost immediate. There is the Storm Spirit Band. I think we pretty much knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I, did, I didn't expect a first phase Storm Spirit Band, though. Uh, that seems a little bit excessive, almost, um, because it's not like uh, Georgia was picking Storm Spirit first pick. Right? They, were, they had last pick Storm Spirit both games, and it was because it was a good Storm Spirit game. I mean, I mean it's not like Lucky Girl's going to pick Storm Spirit into an AM, right? Yeah. Or is she? <laughs> it could. I don't know. It went pretty well. Yeah, it did. It did. And with her with her arcane rune luck, it's not like uh, AM was going to really get a big ball lightning detonation. <laughs> How, does Arcane Rune now also reduce mana loss reduction? Because I know Kaya reduces the damage you take from Anti-Mage because of the mana loss reduction. Does Arcane Rune have that? No, the Ar Arcane Rune doesn't have it, but it will okay. reduce the amount of um, the amount of mana, mana loss while, by, while ball lightninging. So when a when a Storm Spirit balls in and you just blow them up immediately or blow up the team with it, it will be much less effective. Yeah. So here is the Undying. Yeah, oh my god, I'm excited. I, love I haven't it. seen this guy in forever, but this is a very fun here to watch and to play. One of the potentially most aggressive early game heroes that can really man fight. And so is Clockwork, so we should be seeing a very aggressive support duo here. Yeah, and you think this will be position 5 Undying is how it's been played recently? or mostly? Yeah, mostly. Because the hero needs very few items. He, he loves to have some experience, um, so he'll get all the tomes, usually. Yep, great and, mech builder. Yeah. And that's, like, literally all the item he needs. Mech, if he has enough money, buy a pipe also for his team. Yep. And then upgrade him into Greaves, and if you're feeling really squirrely, get yourself a... Oh, Rubik stealing Decay would be so good. Or Tombstone. Yeah. Or Soul Rip. It's just Soul Rip, really, yeah. really good to steal. Undying is pretty much a guaranteed good steal. Yeah, um, the only one they actually don't want is the ultimate. Ultimate is pretty lame for Rubik, because for ultimate to do anything, you need to be close to the enemy, because it has like a fading aura. So at point blank range, it amplifies the most damage. And the farther you get away from a uh, flesh golem, you it gets less and less effective. So not where Rubik wants to be in the thick of things. Bands coming out. Anti Mage gets banned. Yeah, I guess if um if you ban the Storm Spirit yourself, or no, I'm thinking this the other way around. I think whatever. Anti Mage, you know, don't want to deal with it. Medusa follow up as well. This is so, so weird. They're banning Anti Mage and all the heroes. Anti Mage also counters. Just don't want to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, it seems a little weird. Ah, oh, Radiant picks himself up a Lich, so this will be an off lane, either Undying or Clockwork. Yeah, that's very interesting. I mean, it, it it was was it Georgia Georgia? I know I think it was Georgia Tech that ran the Night Stalker off lane. So we've been see we we saw an unusual off lane already once. So maybe we'll get to be treated to an undying off lane. Was that was that in the last game or the game before? No, it was because game one. George, game one that was Georgia had the uh, Night Stalker in game one. I think right. Because oh, did they were on no Radiant. no. Georgia Tech lost game one right, and Night Stalker lost that game. No, Georgia Tech won game one. Georgia just recovered Lucky Girl with the uh Oh, you're right. Stormfield. You're right. You're right. My bad. But yeah. But yeah. They, uh... no, that, that means that they, they are into running a, a weird offlane. So maybe we'll see an undying offlane. Yeah, I, I think we definitely will. Uh, I love undying offlane, actually. He's, his ability to be aggressive is so good that it's very similar to Underlord. It's kind of like the, the Kmart Underlord. Um, but he can be really aggressive, whereas Underlord can pressure towers and harass really good. Undying can just get kills, is what really Undying yeah. can do. Yeah, Undying is an incredible man fighter. If, if, especially sometimes you can try lane him, and if you position yourself badly, he'll get insane decays off. And the guy will become unstoppable. He can lay down a tombstone, and then you split your focus between taking down a tombstone or the undying himself. And you group up to try and take the tombstone and get more decay stacks, and then just chase you down. It's yeah, 
The, there's a limit one. to it, but in early game, the more heroes, enemy heroes in his lane there are, the, the happier he is, actually. Yeah. Because then you're, you're probably reliably getting multi-man decays, and, you know, my magic number is three. Three decays? And you're ready to go on someone pretty hard. Yeah. And if Lich just shows up, an Ice Blast is all it's going to take. You, you throw a Decay Tombstone onto an Ice Blast, you're chasing someone down. Guaranteed kill. Yeah, for sure. So I'm very excited for that. Jogernock gets picked up. Oh, and he might be fighting into a Sven. He's really happy to do that. Yeah, he's going to be able to pick up a Diffusal Blade for him. Oh, actually, Diffusal Blade doesn't purge off Warcry anymore. Ooh. That is correct. Um, I'm actually not exactly sure about this matchup anymore, then. The Jug. The Jug um, into Sven. Yeah. No, I was uh, I was referring to the Undying into Sven. Undying laning against Sven will be very happy. Not right. only able to yeah. steal his uh, his strength, but steal his uh, sap a bit of damage out of that. But Jug, yeah. I mean, what does there's he do about three the strength right heroes. Now? Yeah, you can't purge your work right off, so Juggernaut's damage on Sven is going to be a lot worse. Because that, that was how Juggernaut did damage with Sven before. But now if Sven just pops the Warcry whenever Juggernaut goes in on him, then Sven should be able to man fight him pretty easy, no problem. Yeah, what, what? how do they even itemize for this? They've got the, um, what's the new item called? The null thingy? Or the Nullifier. Nullifier. That will oh, that purge, that breaks right? items. Oh, that it breaks items. Yeah, purge. What's, what's purges? There was something that was added to purge that, um, was that the uh, Earnest Shadows upgrade? That doesn't no, purge. that doesn't. That just reduces purge. healing. Ooh, I hang on, look this up. There's gotta be an item. I'm we we're just forgetting it. Uh, the only item that purges now is Necronomicon. Oh, with the purge. Actually, didn't they remove the purge from the purge creep? I thought. Nope, they still have it. Oh, the mana burn thing is what they pulled from it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so Necronomicon Archer still has Purge. Satyr, Satyr Banisher still has Purge. Oracle's Fortune's End and Shadow Demon Demonic Purge. Those are the only source of Purge now. Wow. Oracle would be really good here. Unfortunately, you know, uh, are they maybe... If they're worried about the Warcry, if they really want to support Juggernaut... Coracle, but really, yeah. <laughs> no. What are they gonna do here? That's this, this um, is really good drafting from Georgia Tech. Yeah, I mean they could just try to kite out Sven. It's a TA. All well, right, if you TA just remove all, yeah, minus armor is the alternate way to, to deal with that. There you go. I mean, TA seems like a very good pick here. They, um, Georgia loves to save their last pick for their mid laner, and they're going to get a favorable against the Zeus uh, as a TA, and just the entire lineup, I mean, minus the Underlord and his Firestorm, everything else uh, Templar Assassin is very, very strong against. Yeah, I mean, Night Stalker picking up an Urn would be a good way to deal with, well, does Urn, Urn doesn't, Urn will still burn Refraction Charges, right? I think so? Yeah, there was, there was something, I can't remember what it was, the damage was too low, actually, to count as a, uh, a burn, but it was not, it was not the urn. So irrelevant. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah, so it is going to be Smack Daddy on the Undyne, which I believe is their offlaner. And yeah, his items look like an offlaner items to me. I, I love the new one, by the way. Uh, starting off with two iron branches and a uh, enchanted mango, and building that up into a one that's so powerful in the early game because one now just gives you passive uh, health regeneration. And we see Lucky Girl actually starting the game with a magic wand against the Zeus. Yeah. Very smart. Why not? Yeah. But yeah, as a league game, we'll once more let you know who is playing and what they're playing. Lucky Girl will be our TA mid here on the Georgia side on Radiant. Let me make sure I have this correct. I do. Undying will be played by Smack Daddy. That off laner Juggernaut is going to be a goodwill. The position one once again. Clockwork, what a story. And finally, Doofle on the Lich. We have Bart6669 on the Zeus. 
Jake playing the Sven, something genuine on Underlord, Mushroom on the Rubik, and finally Steve Cole, Steve Austin on the Night Stalker. Or Leaden Toke, as the chat loves to refer to him as. Yeah, fix your name, Leaden Toke. It, it's, it's because we're not taking the lobby. Once we get Being the ticket jerk. up, we should be able to get official names instead of these uh, wacky ass team names. So how's it gonna go? Um, Jake and Lucky Girl, Mooshroom and Goodwill. Okay, so it is a two for two. The uh, Georgia team went aggressive in the bot, but that just let um, that let Georgia Tech take their own two sets in the top of runes, bounty runes. Yeah. So nothing too special here. Um, there was a deny in the mid, obviously. Steve Austin is going to harass Lucky Girl a little bit here in the mid. With how pulled back this lane is, though, um, oh, the tower will be hitting. He, Lucky Girl has the potential to get a little bit of um, harass on Bart and make sure that he can't last hit very well. Maybe get some denies. Nope. Now, it's important to remember that um, with Static Field, every one of Zeus' skills will remove two charges of Refraction, right? Uh, I guess it will. Depends on, I guess, how much health she has and how much levels you have in the Static Field. Yeah. All right. There's going to be a little bit of action top. Mushroom taking a lot of damage, but they're already throwing down a tombstone and ready to go in. Dufel goes down for the first blood smack that he's trying to go. He gets the decay out onto Rubik and is ready to turn around. He's still got no. He's got only a clarity. No mana for decay right now, so he can't keep the pressure up. But he will have some creeps going into the tower, so they're going to get some pretty good amount, maybe 100 or so damage here onto the tower. Mushroom actually lifts uh, well, a story, yeah, story mark back he into drops the, tower. the battery assault and will be maybe turning around. Decay going into Mushroom. Mushroom has to be really careful. Two decays and he's so killable. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the first blood going to Jake. So that trade. Favoring the carry slightly more there, and he's actually last hitting with no problem so far against this tri lane. Uh. Yeah, Undying's not going to be able to do another decay and the tombstone here for another minute. Actually, he should be able to get it right now if they're ready to turn around, maybe with Dufel. Bart taking a bit of harass in the mid, but not too worried about it. Yeah, the uh, spell damage from side blades hurts quite a bit. So you gotta watch out whenever he goes for a last hit. Lucky Girl using an auto attack to deny and get a last hit at the Ooh, same smack time. Smack that, he's up to 16 soul and strength. He's gonna try and run down Mushroom. He doesn't have the mana for a tombstone, though, so he has to be careful. We'll have another decay. If Dufel can get uh, sacrifices up in two seconds. They might be able to get some good damage here. Sack is up. No, they're not going to use it. There we go. Finally out of the range creep. An Ice Blast into Mushroom is going to do so much damage right now. It's only level 2, but it's still about like half of his HP. Yeah. Surprised that Smack Daddy is focusing these DKs on... They're, okay, they're finally going on yeah, Mushroom. Go. But he's starting to lose some of his strength now. A very good stun will come through from Sven. And stop that aggression in its tracks. Now Smack Daddy is out of clarity. He doesn't have very many stick charges. He's not going to get very many stick charges. He's kind of blown his load here. Yeah, I'm surprised that he was actually using the decays on the Rubik instead of the Sven. It will obviously also hurt Sven being able to last hit as much either. Due to the fact that obviously he loses his damage whenever he gets decayed. And of course, losing a lot of strength means that uh, you won't take a lot more damage because you don't have a lot of health, but that means Tango is also super effective. So Rubik just using the Tango and is at full health already. Yeah, Tangos are great when you're going against an Undying. If uh, you can be at like 
a quarter HP and feel and heal fully. With one tango, With yeah. A single tango, yeah. Bot lane might have Mark trying to set something up here against Genuine, but Genuine is a little fight underlord. Ooh, he's having the time of his life. They got spin out onto him right now, getting the damage out, but it's only a level two Blade Fury. What a story is trying to come here, get the cogs up. Yes, he should be ready. Something Genuine Doe does have his uh, Firestorms, and they yeah. actually have to retreat. <laughs> they, can't, they can't fight him. Yeah, That's an Underlord for you. Not much that Jarnar can do in this lane, honestly. Natural gonna lose his full uh, wave of creeps. So that is a level 6 on TA and level 4 on Zeus. Look here, a super head, kind of trying to go aggressive against Bart, but misses the side blades. Takes a lot of damage for our troubles. I like this. Uh, lucky girl dropping traps into the mid. Does that bonus damage now in Bart if he wants to not get hit by them he has to either commit the mana for a lightning bolt to deward him or he has to eat him yeah and it's, it's constant threat okay he buys a sentry yeah you need a sentry now against uh ta before it was helpful but now it's almost a necessity with those uh traps doing so much damage goodwill spinning up onto something genuine not taking a lot of burn damage thanks to the magic immunity he just came oh. back into lane though oh yeah. my god half life already they buy a fresh set of 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 goes, Oh, they find what a story, or what a story finds Stone Cold and Bart. Throws up the cogs, is going to be able to delay <laughs> up the chase onto him, and we'll make it on out of there. Who's finding who? Smack they both Daddy, find he's each got a other. tombstone up here on the top. He's just trying to take their stack. He doesn't have soul rip, so he's got to stop them. Oh, they get the kill onto Rubik. And now turning it around onto Jake, they've got plenty of decays. He's slowed up. One more shot, should be able to do it. Smack Daddy, if he can turn around. Oh, Jake's gonna be able to heal up a little bit, but if he gets one decay, it should be enough. I've got the Ice Blast. Yeah, very well played. He used a Soul Rip on Rubik, and Rubik took so much damage from Soul Rip because it had all the zombies around it, and also all that stacked creeps. So Mushroom just lost half of his health from that one Soul Rip. Well played there by uh, Smack Daddy. And that's an arcane button on dying. This makes him so much more potent. Yeah, he's getting lifted he got, back. He was lucky to get that pretty early, so that let him let him be able to stay in this lane. Yeah. Something genuine. Goodwill just doing the HP trade again. It's way better for uh, for Underlord than it is for for Yug. For sure, he does have that healing ward taken away though. Now we can see just the last difference between the safe laners. 18 for Juggernaut and 32 for Sven. It shows you how, uh, even though Undying has been aggressive, just how much better uh, Underlord is harassing him off the creep wave. Although it has much less kill potential, obviously. Haste room is found by the Juggernaut. Right. Tombstone goes down to the top. Smack Daddy's ready to fight. He's got his ultimate already. Uses the soul rip. Oh, I don't think he hit the uh, the tombstone with it, so it's gonna go down a little too early. And now trying to put the decays Mid out, lane. But using all his skills, he's gonna oh spin up. Trying it's going down onto Bart. Bart is easily gonna go down. One more last hit from Goodwill. Not even committing the Omni Slash for that needed. Didn't have the Omni Slash. It was level five. He got level six from that kill. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that was very unlucky. Goodwill was just standing on top of the haste room to be able to give it to Lucky Girl, but Zeus tried to contest it and went low ground to pick it up out of from under his nose. But Goodwill just took it and then just chased him down with that haste. Did he have a TP? He had a TP. Zeus had a TP. She could have just TP it out. Dying back to the top. He's using quite a lot of skills. I'd like to see him see if he can recover some mana so he can go for a full combo here or, or a good a n good number of decays. With him, if you aren't in a position to kill, then you pretty much just want to hold all your skills. Uh, I mean, 
It, it is an offlane on dying though, rather than a support. So he could just use decays to harass the oh another kill. Yeah, Bart going down kill. in the mid again. Two v one too. Gonna be able to turn it around on his own cold maybe. Rubik has to TP in to get himself a little bit of space. But what a story is rotating in. Might be able to find anything here. I don't think they've spotted him yet. <sighs> Mech almost done for Smack Daddy. Yeah, that's going to be very helpful for him. Surprised that he isn't actually faring out the buckler and headdress. Those are really good items on them uh, by themselves too. Stone Cold Steve Austin just hanging out here in the mid. Trying to yeah, make, make sure, sure that... to protect the bar. Yep. Doesn't want him going down again. Yeah, he's three levels behind against the TA. And he's got a 2-2-2 a, a two, two, two build. Is this typical for Zeus these days? Or do you still want yep. to max something out? Uh, He's going max Lightning Bolt from this point. But he wants to get static fill, I'm assuming, to the threshold to be able to uh, pop the refraction yeah. charges. And then you want max lightning bolt. But you want two levels of arc lightning so you can last hit with it. Mid lane, lucky girl going aggressive against Bart. Yet again. Oh, might they have there overextended? Oh, no, never mind. Room. Yeah, it's going to get found and blown up by lucky girl. But they could turn it around. Thunder God's Wrath goes out. And now, oh no, one oh more God. shot from the meld strike will be more than enough. And Lucky Girl even getting the help of some cogs. Not quite some help oh God, when he's cleave. caught in them. Lucky Girl is so good at doing this. Doing this kind of like win your lane and just push the aggression super hard. Even melding off that uh, tower strike. Yeah. And this is giving Undying quite a bit of a space to be able to catch up and farm. Second in uh, net worth here, Smack Daddy is. 4,600 gold on him. Mech gets finished and he gets delivered. Jake getting a big ol' stack here, but of course getting rooted up thanks to the jerk creeps. Stone Cold gonna have to tank it for him a bit, even using everything, pulling out all the stops. That was like a quad to a penta stack. Smack Daddy just pulled the enemy Dire Creep onto the uh, small uh, camp here to be able to take that tower. It's a very smart play. When you're a hero that doesn't have good AoE abilities, all, you can, what you can do is just pull the enemy creeps away into a jungle camp, and that will just make mean uh, your Siege uh, Creep will be able to hit the tower with no problem. Yeah, for Undying, his, al his alternative is to like drop a tombstone somewhere and let the zombies... Yeah. Hold up the Mushroom lane, but you don't want to do that. Job. Yeah, Mushroom getting found. Oh, they do get a cliff! It's a cliff, and now Bart going to want to put some damage in, but won't be able to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does he try to... I think he tried to clip him off. Bart, oh, he's going to find out where the tombstone is, and now has to be very, very careful. Oh, this is super awkward. This is the most awkward fight yeah. I've seen. Bart is building up a lot of zombies on him. Yeah, what and this comes a they mech to the mech. They're going to keep him, and now Bart has too many... <laughs> They're going to be able to get a decay, and one more shot should do it. No, he makes it out. They will get the kill on the Night Stalker. And now turn it around. What a story. He eats the Thunder God's Wrath, but he's got his Tranquil Boots ticking. They are unfortunately going to be out. He's TP's up now. Yeah, TP's up. He's got to go. He's got to... Oh, no. Oh, he gets oh no. He uses... TP up. TP up. He uses the Magic Wand, and he even gets a... Uh, a he gets uh, out. Set of Cogs out. He puts a set of cog out to, so he can get Undying out of there. Oh, they're both out. Like, nothing happened in that. Oh, in the and they're still lightning bolting. Fight. The thing was, they had no vision up there. They had yeah. no vision up there, so they couldn't see him TPing out. That has to be the weirdest fight I've ever seen in Dota. The, uh, Google the, uh, bot lane. Oh. Getting chased down. He's yeah. trying to TP out. They He's don't have anywhere there. to stop him. Arcane Boots, finally on Zeus. Yeah, he's not doing oh, very boy. well this game. Yeah, looking at the net worth 
He's sitting at, ooh, sixth place. Oh, Lucky Girl gets oh, found yeah, under her in this room. Is there, they're putting a lot of damage in. Refraction's going, she's trying to TP out. Oh my god. But they've got the damage, they're gonna be able to stop her. It was a desperate TP and it was a good shot, but won't be able to make it out. Firestorm burning up, what a story. And they're gonna be able to get two return kills, uh, maybe a little too aggressive from Georgia that time around. Yeah, that was, that's a triple stack. Um, yeah, TA wanted to take that triple stack away from, but uh, was under the guise of Invis room, but they had a century which just expired, so uh, TA was just caught off by herself with our teammates against all five of them. <laughs> is that <how>? <laughs> <laughs> Zeus still gonna build up his Aether next. Unlike Storm Spirit, the range on Aether is just way too good to pass up on Zeus. Affects basically his bread and butter skills. Yeah. Lightning Bolt, Arc, arc Lightning, he'll be able to spam them out more. I'm assuming probably he'll go for the Kaya as well. Yep, I assume right after that. He could use Aetherland's... something with a little more mana regen, but um, I think he'll be... Aetherlands gives you a lot of mana regen, though. It does, yeah, but you can still... He's got supports. It'll, it'll be up to the supports to keep him top off, because you're, if you're using a lot of skills, then... Uh, Remember, then also, Kaya you. is, in a way, mana regeneration, because yeah. now how the intelligence works, it gives you mana regeneration for having intelligence. Yep. And, and also it reduces mana the cost reduction. Of mana, yeah. yeah. So it makes your entire mana pool go uh, much, uh, much longer, much yep. farther. And Aether Lens will also increase his blink range once he gets that. I'm assuming he's going to get that to be able to keep himself safe. At least a four staff, four against the Clockwork. Clockwork has lifted. Yeah, they're going to chase him down. Stone Cold is here. They caught him in the cogs, but he's making a way. Oh, those were. Mushroom's really cogs. Weird. Yeah. Those Mushroom's cogs. Now they can turn the round on. Smack Daddy going in with a uh, Flesh Golem. Yep, they're gonna drop a uh, Chain Frost in there. We'll just hit Steve once. Now they get the mech as well, turning it around on and dying. Thunder God's Wrath is gonna come out and they're gonna try and fight into what a story. He will be able to lay the cogs down, but here comes an Omni Slash. Jake, oh, they've got too many people here. This isn't the place to be, Goodwill. Goodwill's gonna start taking some damage, but he just drops the Healing Ward, makes it the hell out of there. They're gonna have to drop the Darkness and retreat back to base. But they did get a kill on the Undying with uh, pretty much n with no cost to them except for that Rubik. Yeah. Very unfortunate for Undying there. He was going aggressive, had 16 charges on the uh, Magic Wand, then the mechanism off cooldown, but did not expect the amount of burst damage that came through off that single Storm Hammer, followed by the entire team's Wrath. So did not even have the opportunity to be able to pop those regeneration items. TA has the Desolator, so they could look to take Roshan with the Desolator. Undying also a very good Roshan fighter, obviously, with that uh, Tombstone. They find Mushroom. Yeah. Oh my god, that Temple buy him a little so bit of time, But TA will probably get him here. They've got the stun, but she gets the one last right click off. Jake now trying to chase her down, but they've got a hook shot in. Jake barely making it out of here. He's got a lot of zombies on him. Here comes the trap, and he will be taken out of this game. Bart is actually getting quite low. They're going to have to use the rift and see if they can get him out of here. They should be just oh. fine. Good sustain on uh, on Georgia Tech, making sure they keep everyone alive. Mech yeah. and, uh, and wands and all that. Aether Lens does get finished up on the Zeus, which means he should be able to keep himself a bit more safer with 250 extra cast range. Kai gets course, queued up immediately. Yeah. Of course, after the Aether Lens uh, lost the the mana buff, the sorry, the uh, damage buff on the spells, uh, it did get the additional 100 cast range to be able to compensate for it. So he's actually pretty nuts now. If you Goodwill, just gonna head on in and try to get this Roche, but this is gonna take a while. Yeah, um, it's weird that doing this without the TA and the Desolator plus the Melt Strike. Also on Dying, just TPing in now. The Tombstone's gonna be up. So at least there's that. Georgia Tech though, have no idea. Probably have no idea what's going on until they get a rocket flare in there and they will be able to find it. Well, that's TA a Rubik's comes in. Rocket flare. That dex gets scouted out. But they're gonna know. They fight this? No, there's nothing they can do and they know it, so they're just kind of hanging out. Oh, Mushroom. 
taking that taking that gold away from your from your carry. But no, typically D Ward gold goes to supports. Not if you use the lightning bolt on the carry. <laughs> See, they to didn't. Find it. You didn't buy the sentry. You don't get the ward, nerd. <laughs> but he used lightning bolt to find the uh, sen uh, ward, not a sentry. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Uh, Loki girl has a four staff um. So he has better initiation range. Oh, they're gonna try Juggernaut's and go on the Juggernaut, the but off. here comes Lucky Girl. Lucky Girl is gonna be ready to go. They got the Aegis, but it's not. It's on Lucky Girl. It's not on the Juggernaut. So she's gonna be able to clean up one the Rubik and the Night Stalker down, but they've already lost their Juggernaut for it. Not value so far. Jake just blowing up Lucky Girl. Gonna use the Meld Strike, and now this they're gonna burn the Aegis. So much work. Yes, it's just what a good spot to put it in. That was a stolen healing word from Rubik. Yeah. He healed now, Jake up to full. Now Smack Daddy's coming in. They're going to use the Reality Rift. They could even get Lucky Girl. They're going to cancel it. They know they can get him. Lucky Girl gets four staffed out. They might be able to get Smack Daddy. Yes, he's going to get rooted a second time. Lucky Girl is out, but they got extra out of that. Even going to clean up a tombstone for their trouble. Getting a little bit too aggressive there. Um, it was an interesting bait. bait using the Juggernaut to bait them into uh, Lucky Girl, but... You're using it uh, position one to bait, so Juggernaut going down meant they couldn't follow up with more damage because Lucky Girl was only a source of damage, and once she gets CC down, they had nothing else. Yeah, none of the supports were around to, to do anything to help, like throw some some zoning cogs or anything like that. Yeah. A tombstone, a soul rip to keep him alive, you know? I mean, Undyne was there, but he did arrive late. That was a problem. Yeah. We saw the tombstone go down, but uh, Wild Story was never there as a clockwork. So, yeah, that's another weird thing. They look like they're posturing around Lucky Girl. Lucky Girl may think she be able, she could be able to get Zeus here and could blink onto him. Oh, but they, she sees Jake now. Oh, she's going to jump oh, in wow. anyway. She is super aggressive. The teammates are coming in. Here's a tombstone. Hookshot comes in. It's going to hit onto the zombie. So they're not able to stun him for too long. A zoning pit in the back line means that Smack Daddy's going to get uh, rooted up here a couple times. Shane Frost comes in. It's only going to hit on the one. Mushroom is stuck inside the trees. And now here comes an Omni Slash. It takes out the Sven. Bart is on the run, but he has very little hope of getting out of here. Getting spun up. And Lucky Girl is going to jump forward. Something genuine. Pretty much a tanky boy, but a lot less tanky when going up against Lucky Girl. Meld Strike is going to come through. They've got the damage. Pit of Malice once again going to root him up and buy him a little bit of time. They are going to make it out of here, but they should easily be able to clean up the Tier 2 and even put some pressure into the Tier 3 very quickly. Yeah, that's the fight that they're looking for. The whole time, uh, Dire was on their back foot, and that time Zeus also ended up going down very fast, so you got no support coming in from the back lines. It comes a fortified. <laughs> they should be able to hold this tier 3 with the uh, cores coming up very soon. Yeah, what a story's out front really aggressively, and unless he's, they've got a mech ready, he could be going down here. Six seconds on the mech. A firestorm fade bolt will be, or a fade bolt will be more than enough. And now they're turning it around. Everyone is getting very, very low. Another pit of malice lich is going to go down. They could find Smack Daddy pretty easily. He's dropping the decays and is going to stay alive for a while. One more decay. He could get it off. There it is. He's alive for a little bit longer. So hard to kill, and that bought his cores the time they needed to get the hell out of there. Yeah, they did lose three though. I think that was a little bit too ambitious there for him. Uh, Lucky Girl is going to try to find us. Uh, it's not worth it if he dies though. Okay, he's gonna be. Uh, she's gonna be all right. But yeah, they they should not have stuck around. Once that fortify came out, they should have just backed off. They weren't going to take that tower. And with Savannah and Zeus coming back up with their <laughs> ultimates at the ready, uh, they, they had no chance taking that fight. But they tried to stick around for some reason. Lucky Girl still going up against uh, Steve Cold. Oh my god, and the Hurricane Pike push range wow. is going to be able to catch him from a mile away. Middle tower is under attack. Well, they're going to turn around. Clockwork is getting taken damage, but an Omni Slash gets used into Templar Assassin. It's Oh, wait, what was that? Yeah, no, Goodwill was using that. Onto something genuine. They've got a kill on the Night Stalker only so far. We'll be able to get the Rubik as well. 
bought themselves a little bit more time and should be able to push this next tier two with very little resistance. Yeah. Lucky Girl's super aggressive actions here aren't going punish, which means they can just run over the enemy team. I guess... I, I see them, I see this as... At the same time, their biggest strength, Georgia's biggest strength, and at the same time, there might be their biggest weakness here. With Lucky Girl going super aggressive, if people were team grouped up properly to be able to counter an issue against Lucky Girl, those kind of actions should go punished. But since they don't, she can just run over the team however she wants. Yeah, so far, carrying her team super hard in both these games. But the high ground defense for the side of Georgia Tech is nothing to be underestimated here. With the Zeus and the Underlord being able to have enough lane clear to keep them safe for a very long time. And also, of course, the Sven for the turnaround potential if they do dive into the Tier 3s. They're going to go for the final Tier 2, and they should be able to start really exerting some map control here, hopefully. <laughs> They it's very need important to they go keep Sven out of the jungle. Are they going to try to go for the tier 3? Yeah, it doesn't look like it. They probably want to find the Roshan before they attempt on our high ground here. Yeah, unfortunately, still a minute and a half before the minimum Rosh respawn. <clears throat> Bart doing his part, taking away all these runes. Or sorry, the wards from the war spots. Night Stalker still very poor this game. Not even close to an Ags. Looks like he's gonna go for a uh, Ghost Scepter first, which is will be a great item against this team. Yeah. Blocks the TA damage, blocks the Juggernaut damage, of course. Not from Blade Fury, but you should be able to keep yourself safe from the Omni Slashes. Yeah, and one of Undying's big threats after he gets a lot of Strength Steel is that he can right-click like a monster. Yeah. And of course, also a zombie can't hit you, so you won't be slowed down by the zombies either. Oh yeah, there you go. You'll be slowed down by the Ghost Scepter instead. Yeah. Uh, Ghost Scepter doesn't slow you down. I believe. I thought, oh, is it? I always, I thought every ethereal. It's decrepify. It's only the decrepify. That's so that weird. That slows it down. Yeah, okay. Decrepify right, immediately. Find a hook shot forward onto Jake. Jake goes down. Easy kill. And they're ready to try and push high ground, force a buyback. And then when they force that buyback, this will be a really good time to uh, to get the Roche because Roche? Georgia Tech is going to have to be really careful about contesting it with a buyback down. Only Slash comes out into the back. We've got an Orchid oh, out onto uh, Rubik. Rubik can't do too much right now. They've got a pit going. Cogs the zone, and they're still getting plenty of damage into the tower. Firestorm will delay them up for a little bit. Oh, the damage. Need, oh, Smack Daddy's got to go. He gets a good decay, but it'll be lifted up, and he's not dead yet. Oh, Are you my kidding? God. He's going to be able to get the soul rip, and then in just a second, he's got his magic wand as well. Pops that up. They're going to have a... Uh, where's the, cent uh, the healing ward up in eight? Their whole team can just group around that, and they're ready to go again. But Sven is coming back up, so they might want to back off here. They did lose their window, but they did take 90% of tier 3. Yeah. A successful hold, but it won't be the same time uh, if the same situation happens again. Yeah, and Georgia Tech, they held that without the Sven and didn't have to commit the buyback. So I, I think they, they still are... It went as best for them as it could, given the circumstances. Yeah, I agree. They, they were a little bit greedy, uh, not spending that buyback, but it, since they didn't lose a tier 3, it happened okay. Um, there's a smoke play now coming out. They would love to find Lucky Girl. They might. They yeah, do. Slower. Oh, oh, but because of the refraction, they aren't able to slow her down, or they aren't able to get any damage to stop the blink. Now Tombstone goes down. It's four, three of them, four of them fighting into it. Chain Frost is blowing around. One of them, two of them down. Chain Frost still doing quite a bit of work, but they've already got the clock and the Lich. Oh my god, this Chain oh Frost is no. doing so much! Oh, Lucky Girl! Oh Girl's my god, it's still going! It's still going! Oh no. my god! It's this, eggs, it's eggs! This, has been, a huge, this eggs. has been a disaster. Lucky Girl jumping in, ready to go. Jake is inside the trees right now. They return with two kills. They're not able... I actually thought they were going to get way more kills out of that, but 
Oh, that Chain Frost was the hero of that fight. Oh my god. Uh, wait for the fight recap. Look at the yeah, fight recap. How, how much damage, damage he's done? Oh 10,000 damage. 7,500 from the Lich. I have not seen eggs on Lich for a very long time in a competitive game. And I think these guys didn't expect it either because they're like, okay, it's going to wear out. It bounced like 10 times. But no, it did not wear out. It killed your entire team. Holy crap. That was the most value I've ever seen out of a Chain Frost. Yeah, man. Dufel MVP with that play right there. God damn. Yeah. And the tombstone placement just meant that pretty much everyone was guaranteed to get tombstones on them, and it added so much value to that Chain Frost. The Oaks jungle. out forward. Yeah, they're going to find Night Stalker now. Trying to fight into a stolen Omni Slash. It actually did a good amount of damage. Jake could be ready to go. He gets a stun onto Clockwork. They're trying to go onto Goodwill, but they have to turn around and get back to their high ground because Lucky Girl is here and is just firing red little laser bolts away. They get a Melt Strike into Jake. Firestorm going to keep him a low, but another Psionic Trap. Now Jake's trying to turn around onto him. They've got a lift, but another Chain Frost is going to hit him. Mooshroom with the stolen uh, refraction will be fine for now, but could be going down. Spin up onto the, uh, the Ghost Scepter, but we'll get Force Theft onto the high ground. Now, Georgia Tech's getting slowly picked apart by just plays. The plays by Georgia right now are where they need to be. Yeah. No, Lich, they've, they've been playing I've, I've never, I right haven't now. seen a Lich have this much impact directly in this much time. You know, typically it's it's uh, the, the armor vending machine. But just the the chain frost and the yeah. ice blast he's putting out right now. Just just look at the level differences, the hero level. For, this for is the like sports. the big. Yeah, just, this is the big story of the game. 23, 18, and 17 on the cores of Georgia, while 16 and 16 on Zeus and Sven. They are just way too low level, way too under level to be able to fight this. And uh, Lucky Girl is about to hit level 25 on the TA. Do you think he goes for the Refraction or the Spill Paralyze? Um, I think Refraction instances is better, but uh, I won't be surprised if uh, she goes for the Spill Paralyze. Night Stalker just by is how reliably using that urn on her to burn those charges. Oh, here we go. Here comes the fight. It's going to be a pit. Four of them caught. A lot of damage getting taken. Goodwill, I think he popped the cheese there for that one. He's back up to high health. Lucky Girl's pretty low, and they're going to drop the Aegis. But the Chain Frost, once again, bouncing around and forcing them back. They're still able to get here into the barracks, and Lucky Girl jumps forward into Mushroom. Omni Slash is used, but Mushroom has that Ghost Scepter. It will be fine just for now. Thunder God's Wrath gets used, but it's just not enough damage. Darkness gets dropped, and now they're ready to turn around. Pit and Alice onto four. They've got the damage bouncing around. Stone Cold going to be okay for now. They get the Clockwork, but they really need to get the jug Juggernaut or Lucky Girl. Juggernaut finally goes down to the Lightning Bolt, but Lucky Girl is making her way away. No barracks claimed. Georgia Tech is going to hold, but it's going to cost them economically. And Bart with that, oh no, one more shot would have done it. Please, like, can they only oh, turn around? Goes in aggressively. She's got the Bloodthorn and she has the Refraction, so she's not super scared. The Bloodthorn will not get the kill, and oh, she's not going to get anything out of it, but she did put the put the fear in their heart yeah. economic damage what's it what's it gonna be still a good gold change uh towards the but i don't think that caught everything in that fight did it um that basically caught everything uh there, there wasn't a lot of losses going down over onto the georgia side of course uh, we were talking minus the fight they had in the jungle where they lost this van when it comes to high ground push high ground hold rather um, Georgia Tech is actually doing a very good job with their Zeus and the Underlord putting a tremendous amount of damage here <coughs> and zoning potential. Only one buyback spent. They also saved the uh, Sven buyback again. Yeah, Jake's just not been able to output the damage that he normally needs to. Yeah, he's way too behind. He's behind on levels, he's behind on items. He has Blink Dagger, Mask of Madness, and Echo Saber. And that Mask of Madness might even be doing him, like, and a not even any good things. Yeah, and a random point. plate mail. Yeah, I guess he thought he needed the armor to offset the Mask of Madness minus armor. And the meld damage that was coming from Lucky Girl. And that's, oh yeah. Yeah, but, uh... Getting that purchase, unfortunately, will delay up his BKB. 
Yeah. Maybe it was uh, originally planning to go an AC. That's what I'm thinking. The BKB, yeah. Because, I mean, you look at the other team, you're like, I don't really have that much I need to be magic immune against, but really, like, the, uh, the Ice Blast slow is enough to really ruin his day. Yeah. He would love to have both of the items, because armor does matter a lot here, but... Yeah, he's a poor, he's a poor Sven. Alright, we did get the refraction instances, so TA is going to be even harder to burst now. Alright, yeah, I think, I think that is going to, that is the best, uh, talent overall. They're going to jump Temple, in, hookshot, going to hold a little bit of time for them. Here comes the chain frost is coming in. How's it going to go? Bart will finally be able to join the, disjoint this one, but Jake goes down to the burn on the orchid, or on the bloodthorn. Now Lucky Girl going in very aggressively. Could be able to get Bart here. One more shot is all it's going to take and she gets it. Now Stone Cold as Ghost Scepter is out and trying to run back. Buyback from Jake is going to get him back into this fight. They actually aren't even going for the barracks here very much. <laughs> Where is? There's Lucky Girl. Pit of Malice doing a good amount of work. Jake jumps in. If he goes down here, it's going to be a bad news. And he does go down. Jake, no buybacks. Three heroes. And this should be GG. Spin yeah, up on the Stone Cold. They get a fourth one, and now they're going to go and put so much base damage into this game. Georgia Tech not ready to bow out of this game. It's going to be hard. They're going to lose at least two lanes of racks here with Zeus still being down. Yeah, and that 10 refraction charges is nuts, especially against a team like this. There's no way they can break through all those charges, especially with a Sven. And... Yeah, there goes Underlord. Underlord needs to stay in the fountain right now. There's nothing he can do until at least Zeus comes back up. And they're looking for their Mega Creeps. Zeus is up in two seconds. Rax getting taken down right now while this is happening. Here yeah, comes Chain the Frost, uh, not going to do too much oh. today, but Lucky Girl is jumping forward. There goes the kill on to Zeus. Zeus is out of this game. 70 seconds. They're putting the damage. Well played getting spammed out, but no GG call yet. They are able to get yet another uh, kill onto the Clockwork, but it's costing them their entire base. And now Georgia's going to just run them over. Jake doing so much damage, but finally will fall. Moose run. <laughs> It's got his stolen meld up and hanging out. GG finally gets called from Georgia Tech, and that'll be the end of the game. 2-1 in favor of Georgia in this Georgia-centric series. Yeah, very well played there. Uh, we had the unfortunate game one, which was almost a disaster because we, we thought it might be a forfeit there with one of their players not being able to have a decent intern to be able to play the game, but that got fixed up, and Lucky Roll is showing us what she's made out of. Yeah, for those in chat arguing about urn burning reflect, refraction, physical or magic or pure damage does not matter. It's a damage instance on refraction as long as it's above a threshold, which I can't think exactly how much it yeah. is. Yeah, I mean, that's what we said, wasn't it? Yeah, chat, chat's arguing. Or chat doesn't think that's correct. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of damage it is as long as you take a, uh, enough damage. Like, it's, like, For example, like in late game, creeps don't have enough damage to, be able to do any uh, damage on the charges. Uh, but I don't know what the threshold exactly is. But yeah, a great game for TA. Great last pick there. Um, the it was, As we saw at the end, the final fight that happened, TA got initiated on, and with the during the entire stun duration, they couldn't even get the refraction down. Yeah, with the, uh, the, the extra charges on there. And, and that's one of those ones that you can prime as well. You can pop it up, and then after it's... it's uh, gone off cooldown a little bit you can jump in and then fight they might if they burn it down you can just repop it yeah 19 1 and 11 for lucky girl carrying her team both games they kind of play uh kind of like old liquid or i guess eg now kind of uh focusing on their single mid player and giving them the pedestal and just supporting and just going all in on that one player all right, I found it. Damage below five after reductions is completely ignored. So it's a pretty, pretty tiny threshold. Yeah, wow. I thought it was a little bit bigger than that. I, I was expecting like 20 is one of those normal yeah. ones. 
Um, because that was the old uh, cancel healing threshold, right? Was twenty, I think. Right. But yeah, very very great game. Um, I'm I'm so happy that I that we got to see uh, Lucky Girl the internet connection situation get fixed because that was a completely different. Those two games were completely different from game one. Yeah, for sure. All right, everyone. Well, that is going to be our game. That is going to be our series, Georgia versus Georgia Tech. Congratulations to Georgia. We're going to send you off with a few plugs here. My name is Wivrex. If you like casting, you like Dota, or if you like Dota-themed beers, give me a follow there on the Twitter, at Dota Brews. If you like handsome, handsome men, you can give my co-caster here, JT Golgi App, a follow at a at JT Golgi App on Twitter. We've also got oh God, some social media here. For oh CSL. If you want to get involved oh in our God. Discord, type exclamation point. Uh, hold on. The wife. <laughs> my gosh, I'm sure you heard all of that. Exclamation point Discord in chat. You can also find us on Twitter, twitter.com slash CSRLeague or twitter.com slash collegiate CSGO. You can find us on Facebook, if you still use Facebook, at facebook.com slash CSRLeague. Now, uh, finally, a big shout out to our sponsor, Twitch. Nothing but gratitude for the largest streaming platform in gaming to support Collegiate Esports. From PAX East and West and many more events, CSL would not be what it is today without help and support from them. Be on the lookout for cool opportunities to get involved with Twitch in the near future, and be sure to show them some love for their support at twitter.com slash twitch and facebook.com slash Twitch. Once again, this is CSL 2017 to 2018 with Wivrex and Golgi. We'll see you guys in the next series with Carlton and Golgi.